G'day team, welcome to the first video of 2023. Um, I'm gonna start this year off by going through a topic which can stop people dead in their tracks if they don't really understand what they're looking at and, and what they need to do. So that's gonna to be topography. It's very important to know some pretty fundamental things to find your feet and then you can start to really work out what to do. So what we're looking at here is a topographical survey which has been sent to us by the surveyor so if you were if you know if you're building a house on a property you're going to get a survey done just to establish where the boundaries are and generally as part of that survey you're going to get some contours or like a, a, a topography put together as well so if we were reading this where it says 101.2, 101.4, 6, 8, you know, 1 or 2, etc. These are called contours. And the 101.2, that indicates the height that that contour is above a certain datum. Whether that is um, sea level or if it's in some big estate, it might be from like, you know, the zero level of that estate. Um, where it comes from doesn't particularly matter, but the numbers that you're working with from this survey uh, they do matter because you know, if everyone on this this site is working to you know about 100 meters, 102 meters, um, you all need to be working to the same numbers. So you'll notice here that where it goes 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, that means that these contours or all of the contours on this on this survey are at 200 millimeter co uh, intervals. They can be 100 mil intervals, they can be 500 mil intervals, they might only ever be at meters. You have to have a look at the intervals to be able to count um, count the contours because if you're just counting contours but you don't know how actual far apart they are height wise, um, you're wasting your time. So this is quite a neat one. Um, to be honest, a lot of the time they, you know, they may only give you like a sporadic contour label off to the side somewhere. So a lot of the time you do actually have to rely on um, on counting contours to actually establish which one you are working to. You'll also notice that there's these little spot levels or like these little pluses or whatever you'd want to call them here. Um, so that is going to be a spot level. That's where on the, uh, the guy with the stick on site will put the stick down and they'll get a height at that exact point. They'll go around and do this a bunch of times and then it will, they'll collate all of that information and generate this, you know, topographical map automatically. But this, you know, that's what a surveyor does. You don't need to worry about how these things are actually put together. You just need to be able to read what is going on here and then use that information in the design moving forward. So when reading a map that is a topographical one like this, if you've got a short space between the contours, that means that it's quite, you know, the, the distance between those heights is little there. Whereas when we get to here, there's a big space, which means it's a lot, it's a lot um, flatter. So if I was to, to rotate this, just to make it a bit easier for um, for people to, to establish. So I'm gonna draw a line in here and then we're going to give you a rough idea of what's going on. So let's see that there is a contour. So this contour here is about 99 meters. So if we draw that up there, uh, this one here is about 100.4. So let's just roughly project that there and there this is all very rough it's just so that you can get an idea of what this site should actually be looking like okay so if our zero is 99 meters and then this first line here is about 100.4 so that means that it goes up 1400 there so the land travels from zero up to 1400 we have a look here it's about 100.5 so 1500 above zero so it's quite flat through there have a look here and it's like 102.7 so what's that um so that's 3700 up here so let's go 3700 so that's quite steep there get to here and it's about 103.5 that's 4500 up 
Okay, so look, you, you get the idea of as we try, like as these numbers get higher, the distance that they are above the natural ground or datum or whatever you want to call it increases as it goes. So you can see it batters up, flat, up, flat. So if we were going to have a look at that in 3D, that's what it actually looks like. Which is exactly how you'd expect. Doesn't kind of like matter if we like it or not. It just kind of is is the way it is. Um, so now that you've got a rough idea of what you're actually looking at with with this map, you can then start to get into the modification of topography. So before you start doing any real work with topography, there's a few more. Uh, tiny bits of terminology which you probably should know about first so when you're building a house you need to establish what a pad level is so the pad would be when they're out there with the uh, with the big machinery compacting the dirt making a flat piece of land which essentially works as the you know the, the zero level for you know that house um, that needs to be very clearly demonstrated in the plans and that's something that you need to work out early because Topography gets tricky when you're dealing with things like driveways, for example. So driveways can only be a certain gradient. So if you've got a weird site like this where it's quite steep, one of the first things that you might need to do is work out what our front setbacks are and then how far up the site we can go given the gradient of the site. So the maximum maximum comfortable gradient for a driveway is about one in five. So if you're looking at building the garage here and then you know what the, the RL or the, the level at the front boundary is, but then they want to build the house, you know, high up out of the ground, it might be like, you know, one in three, one in two between the driveway and uh, so, so like between the crossover and the driveway and that, or the garage. and that won't work. So often you'll kind of reverse engineer the house. So we'll say, okay, well, here's the front boundary. If we go up on a steep driveway, we've got the garage here, and then we can start building on top of that. But that's something that's yeah, very important to understand. One more quick thing that I will go over in this video. So this is just, this is the 101 day one basics video here. So there's nothing too crazy in here. I'm gonna roughly explain or try and easily explain what cut and fill is. So if we have, a relatively steep property like that. So this is looking a section through the front of the property. So this is your front boundary. Let's just try and do this neatly. Say so that's your front boundary and this is your back boundary. Unless you're building a house up on stilts, or a split, like even a split level house is gonna need some topography, but yeah, unless you're building a house up on stilts, which would be to say like, you know, if the, the ground floor is like that, and then you've got some posts holding the house up like this, for example, you're going to need to do some cut and some fill. So once we've worked out what our pad level was, which is what I was roughly explaining here about, that's like when they, when they cut the site, that's the pad level. So say if our pad level was right in the middle here, you'd be building the pad out like this and you'd be building the pad in like this. So it goes without saying that the extent of the pad here is underground and then the extent of the pad here is above the ground. So what we would do in that case is they would cut the ground here and then they would use that cut and then they would fill the ground out here. So it's going to end up looking like this. And then I'll just draw in what our existing ground look like here. So what do you call this and what do you call this? Well, this is obviously cut and this is obviously fill. What are these lines though? These lines are going to be called batters or batter banks. Um, the gradient of the batter certainly matters. So this, well, I think I've drawn these in incredibly steep. Like these look like they're about one in one. So 
when I was talking about the driveway stuff here, talking about one in five, one in one. So let's say this is our pad. If the edge of this pad is 500 mil above the natural ground, natural ground. So if we're 500 mil there, a comfortable batter is one in four. So if we come down, or if the height difference is 500, you need to multiply that by four, and that's gonna give you 2000. So then we go between here and here, and that gives us a batter of one in four. Now then, if that batter ended up needing to be one in two, then that would only be a thousand, obviously. So you can see a batter of one in four is quite long and quite shallow and it's, it's, it's quite comfortable. One in two is about twice as extreme and the most insane batter that you can do is a one in one and uh, one in ones it's uncomfortable it's very to, like it's difficult to kind of walk around and it's just it's just un it's unideal so if you can get a one in two one in three one in four etc that's much, much more comfortable it takes up more space but it's it's a lot more comfortable okay look so i'm probably going to cut it there being part one of like a multi multi-video series. Um, next video I'm gonna go into will be showing you how to actually import a topographical survey like this and then automatically generate a topography based on that. But if you're super impatient, I'll give you the, the 30 second rundown. So let's just copy this across to here, hide reset. So if I was using this one exactly, you would go massing in sight, topo surface, create from import, select import instance, select that, check none, um, work out which of the uh, which of the CAD layers have the topographical inf inf uh, information. I do plans for these guys all the time, so I know it is 105, 106, and then we go okay, and then press okay. So if we have a look in 3D, turn off our section box, you can see that this is the fresh one that I've just made over here. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it really is that simple, but there's, there's a lot more to it. So I'll go into that in detail next, uh, next video. So yeah, um, I hope you got something out of this. Um, thanks for joining me for another year and, um, yeah, talk to you all soon. Cheers. Bye.